I first came to China in 1986. Uh, I was 12 years old and I came to China to visit my aunt and uncle uh, who were living in Beijing. Uh, at that time, my uncle uh, Winston Lord was U.S. ambassador to China. China is a lot different today than it was back then. I remember uh, going around the diplomatic district in Beijing and people are actually cutting the grass with uh, small scissors. Uh, and when we came to Shanghai, 10 o'clock at night, they used to shut off the electricity uh, in the hotel. My first time coming to China, that was back in 1998. When I first went to Beijing, I swear, like there were very few buildings above like eight stories. And then 10 years later, there were hundreds of buildings above 50 stories, it seemed. I moved to China in uh, early 2008. I moved right before Chinese New Year. It was an initial shock also because I was surprised about how sometimes certain things were, were very behind. I still remember how complicated it was to buy something as simple as a plane ticket. That was very difficult. You need to arrange a person to come to pay cash on, on delivery. But it was very, very impressive was how things changed so fast. In less than a year, I was able to get access to, to Alipay. That made everything very, very different. 2007, China was just taking off. It was the boom years. International VCs were flocking into China uh, and uh, local capital was just starting to, to happen. And when I saw the sort of the lightning change of, of progress and the rate of development in China, I really felt like it was something that I would like to be involved in as a venture capitalist to help spin up more software and hardware companies in China. Today, China has gone from one of the weakest economies in the world, uh, and this is going back to the late 80s, uh, to one of the strongest. I had backed other accelerator programs, but they were really focused on the U.S. market at that time. And so when I realized that they weren't really looking outside the U.S., I thought that it was a great opportunity to set up the accelerator model in China. And it was Cyril Ebersweiler, who I had met while I was setting up another company in China, that joined with me, joined with SOSV, to create the first accelerator program in China through China Accelerator. Yeah, so it's been quite an amazing ride at SOSV uh, since I joined. Uh, it was probably uh, myself, uh, Sean, and a couple other people. And now we are uh, obviously a worldwide uh, organization. Everybody has adapted a uh, very strong culture, uh, uh, which is all about uh, execution and helping out the, the startups the right way. My uncle wrote the Shanghai Communique, which opened U.S.-China relations. Looking at uh, my aunt and uncle uh, acting as a bridge uh, between uh, U.S. and China, so that was an inspiration for me. And that's what brought me back in 1993 to study. Uh, and I ended up staying and working in equity research uh, after university. My role uh, was to explain technology trends and the markets in Asia to global and especially U.S. investors. One of the most interesting things about uh, Asia at that time is the lack of understanding, uh, not just uh, among you know, governments, but also on the business side. I got to work on Alibaba's first IPO. I also worked on the Kingsoft IPO. My role uh, was to help uh, Jack Ma and Joe Tsai at Alibaba explain to the world um, what the problem was that they were solving and how they were solving it. And that experience of being in the market in the very early days, working with the pioneers, helping them sell and market uh, not just their uh, services but also their stock to global investors uh, was the foundation of uh, my career, uh, now almost 26 years on the ground in Greater China. Well, I moved to China because I, I wanted to build a company. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I did believe in learning by doing and, and getting your hands dirty. So I, when I arrived here, I uh, tried very different types of, uh, of things to explore. And that's where I started to, to see opportunities. As an entrepreneur myself, when I started my first company, I recognized how lonely it is, uh, you know, to be facing these challenges, to be making your first corporate sale, to be getting in institutional investors, to not know what is a cap table, you know, what kind of equity position should you be talking about? What do these terms mean? Crossing that required the help of some really good guys. When Fanning Accelerator first started in 2010, I was a mentor. 
Uh, a mentor is someone who helps out with expertise and advice for free and hopefully uh, adds value to the startups. In the 2010, I joined Chan Accelerator as a, as a mentor. At that time, I was very involved with my own startups. I also raised my own fund, so I was quite active. And there was a moment where I kind of like realized that uh, what I really like from the startup world is this process of, of building and at the same time be involved in different projects. And at that time I had done two startups. The first startup was an unmitigated disaster. I had made many, many mistakes, uh, both on the investment side and on the startup side. Um, but I also had started to get some good successes uh, based on a, a pretty deep understanding of what the challenges are that especially international entrepreneurs have when they enter the China market. But not only that, what type of challenges Chinese companies and entrepreneurs have when they try and go global. You know, we talk about crossing the chasm of going from like a small uh, company into a big market and a big opportunity that is a world-shaking opportunity. Crossing those deep chasms of knowledge, you just can't jump at any point off the cliff and expect to make it to the other side of the chasm. You have to build a bridge. It was a wonderful experience with China Accelerator. So we started Sabas in Hong Kong, but then we have to be very quickly uh, able to launch our product and services to other Asian markets. Um, and the most important attribute for our team to train ourselves up uh, is the ability to localize our product and service. Uh, so I realized there's actually a lot that we can learn from a group of mentors and other uh, startup fellows in the community. The ability to also get access to top quality investors uh, in the community is also one of the very big benefits of joining the China Accelerator. And we are in many ways at SOSV and at China Accelerator in particular about building those bridges, uh, you know, introducing startups to the gatekeepers of various industries so that they can have a, uh, a much straighter and clearer path to success. I mentored for a number of years until 2014 during a mentorship session where we were judging startups actually right here in this office and I got to meet Sean the founder of SOSV. After the judging session was done he asked me to join China Accelerator as the managing director and to take it to the next level. So after a few years as a mentor finally I decided to, to join China Accelerator. One of the things that was critical in terms of deciding to join was that vision that it was about building real businesses that were solving a pain point for people. It was about the customer and it was about delivering real value to the customer. China Accelerator was a great fit. Although myself as an investor, I've been involved in many different startups, both from an entrepreneur perspective and an investment perspective. I never really went through like a detailed, you could say, a, uh, the lean startup approach and they put a curriculum around that and then they put a tremendous amount of resources to really help you. The uh, goal for the team is to be extremely proactive uh, and help out uh, each other and help out uh, fellow entrepreneurs as well to become successful. You can talk with anybody in the organization and their whole uh, bones and blood will just be uh, all about how can I help. The biggest change since 2014 when I joined China Accelerator was changing who we invested in. We actually looked for startup founders who were already in China and helped them accelerate. We also did not just invest uh, in international founders, but also local Chinese founders. We were looking for people who had expertise in the market, uh, not kids, but seasoned veterans. Uh, and who had a deep understanding of the challenges uh, in this market and how technology could be used to solve those challenges. So China Accelerator is actually my uh, first investor of Yushopo, the absolute first angel. I remember at that time um, I was sharing with William who I am, what I wanted to do, how I perceived this market to be, and it was very quick and immediate. Um, William said, you know, I, I, we're always bad on people. I think you're definitely the right person. And boom, from there, um, three and, year, and four years later, we're where we are now. China Accelerator, you know, work with people from all around the world. The best uh, startups you can possibly imagine. The amount of um, positive energy that we get from that office, it's phenomenal. I mean, uh, people are actually very much engaging, very supportive. So uh, we decided to, uh, to join the program and that turns out to be one of the best decisions that we, uh, we made for this company. And next, all the way from India, we have Neil.
The unfair advantage of the accelerator is what we call the cohort effect. When you bring uh, companies to an accelerator, you bring them all together and you create this community of trust, this community of sharing, where funders are able to support each other. It's a very special experience to try to build a business and it's great to do it when you're like a in a team of teams, not just doing it on your own. Although I love my partners, it's great to do it with a lot of other companies that are experiencing the same struggles and trials and tribulations that you are. That support sometimes comes because they exchange best practices. It also happens because there's a healthy peer pressure where if you're able to put together a group of companies that they all excel in one different area, that uh, level of excellence in that area becomes a target for everybody. So overall, the whole group ends up delivering better. When you are running a business and you're always consulting with friends and family, they always tell you how great everything is, but there's always ways to improve your business. And I really love it when people here, the EIRs, the mentors, uh, everyone here, they just challenge you and it gives you a fresh perspective. If I don't think the CEO thinks this is a problem on stage, it's not. They really feel it. We're both first-time founders, so there's a lot of stuff we don't know. Why wouldn't we want to be in a community with experts who have worked with thousands of startups? Starting up a business, it's, it's very chaotic, right? I mean, there's a lot of things coming at you. Learning how to create workflows and how to prioritize your time is, is invaluable, and I think that's something that China Accelerate has really helped us um, do. And also how to run a team and, and be a boss and manage people. So when I joined, there was th three of us uh, plus me. Now, six years later, we have 34 people on the team. We've gone from 30 mentors to over 400 mentors. And we are accelerating a lot more companies, uh, over 40 per year. But it's about putting a lot more resources into a small number of companies and helping them get to where they want to go. And that is cross-border. When we started this model, you know, we didn't want to just be copying a model and just leaving it there. So one of the things that we did that was quite innovative and really led the field, and others have copied this now, is that we not only invested at the accelerator stage, we also invest post-accelerator. So we will invest hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars into the companies as they hit the seed in Series A and beyond. The company actually started growing really fast. And we were actually the largest fundraising amount during the program in the SOSV history. So we're very proud and honored about that. After China Solar, it is our time now to choose the battle and really go win. And if it's the wrong battle, it didn't win. We have survived, so we choose another battle we win. So we become much more disciplined as a corporate company. And by this year, we will be a 1 billion revenue size about $2 billion valuation expected by the market. China Accelerator is the first program in Asia to have had a, a unicorn come through the program. A unicorn valuations, over a billion dollar valuations. And in fact, China Accelerator is the first to have a startup going through the program and becoming a decacorn, uh, something more than uh, $10 billion in valuation. We've done extremely well. Uh, a unicorn like BitMEX uh, makes a lot of the mistakes that we made uh, go away. Um, but we've also invested in other companies like SnapAsk and Ushopal and, and TappyTune and Flixtree and Fable, um, which we believe will go on to not just make a lot of money, but change the world for a better place. And solving fundamental problems with technology and not just for the rich and the 1%, um, but for the low and middle income users who are on 50, 80, $100 smartphones, $200 smartphones, whose monthly salary is only 250, 300, 500, 800, 1,000 dollars a month. Um, these is where the big opportunity is. Uh, the next 4 billion internet users will see a revolution in their lives with the use of a smartphone, uh, with technology. So you can imagine that in 10 years of operation, and, uh, and right now 18 batches that we've, we've run, lots of things have changed. And that constant ability to, to adapt is in our DNA. But some of these changes have come also based on how the world has changed. At first, many people approached China as a destination and as a market, but 
China today is increasingly creating the innovation, creating the new business models, creating the new software networks and software apps, etc. In the future, I'm sure that we'll uh, continue to uh, reinvent the way accelerators are supposed to function uh, at early stages and the way they will educate future entrepreneurs. In fact, we continue this idea of change as a constant because we believe that innovation is so important that every single time we run a program, we change at least 20%. Um, that's the only way we can adapt, that we can improve constantly. We think the future is very bright for China Accelerator and MOX. The reason why is, is simple. Uh, going cross-border is never as important as it is today. And it's especially harder because of the bubbles. You have different internets around the world, Indian internet, China internet, US internet, European GDPR internet. And bridging those different bubbles, those different blocks, is increasingly getting harder. So the ability to navigate cross-borders and cross-bubbles is where we see the future of China Accelerator and MOX. We see China as Zhongguo, the center country, uh, and uh, we do uh, feel that it is a central place to play in the world in the years to come. There's a lot of regionalism going on, there's a lot of nationalism going on. It's sort of a virus that's spread through the world. We see a brighter future and a continuous bright pathway, uh, and we're going to keep driving down that road we think that innovation uh, can't be stopped. It's not served well by a bifurcation or a decoupling. Uh, and what we're really focused on is making sure that we can bridge those bubbles uh, and hopefully even pierce those bubbles and make sure that uh, we are one world, uh, interconnected, uh, and hopefully uh, have a, a peaceful and prosperous end. We see a globalized world with the world's best minds working side by side as being beneficial to the future of humanity. And we are going to continue to play our part for all of humankind. So we're very enthusiastic and excited about the next chapter. Uh, we think the uh, next 10 years will be even better than the last 10 years. And looking forward to um, helping uh, startups continue to go across border uh, for many years to come. There is nothing uh, uh, better than uh, seeing other entrepreneurs progress as fast as possible, uh, and in particular have a greater impact uh, on the world's problems. And so we invest, we live, uh, sleep, eat uh, with the startups, and then we invest again. Uh, and it's not just an investment. Uh, when you live with somebody, that's called family. Happy 10th anniversary, Giant Accelerator. Yay! Hey, Giant Accelerator. Happy 10th anniversary. Congratulations to the entire China Accelerator family. China Accelerator, happy 10th year anniversary. China Accelerator, happy 10th 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 anniversary. <laughs> Congratulations, it has been a fantastic journey. Happy 10th birthday, China Accelerator. Yay! Happy 10 years anniversary. Thanks. Happy 10th anniversary, China Accelerator. Happy 10th anniversary, China Accelerator. Congratulations and all the best for you guys. Happy 10th year anniversary, China Accelerator. Happy 10th anniversary, China Accelerator. Congrats, China Accelerator. We rock, we rock. Woo!